It might look like a desolate landscape, but people come from all over the world to hunt in South Texas. This region of the world is home to thousands of species, but it's best known for its trophy white-tailed deer. Big ranches spend millions of dollars a year in conservation efforts to help improve the herd and manage healthy harvests. So our ranch here is just, just over 30,000 acres and uh, it's all low fence and we implemented a pretty strong management program. Management not in just what we harvest, but also in the habitats that we create. And it's not uncommon for us to burn a thousand acres to create habitat for our animals. These improved areas really provide nutrition for not only our deer, nilgai, birds, but for all animals. We have a really impressive nilgai population, but that requires a lot of management and proper harvest. And predators here, particularly coyotes, require year-round management to keep their numbers at bay. Squirrels, rabbits, turkeys, they all play a vital role in this ecosystem, and they all require some sort of management. The main species we have trouble managing is feral hogs. Feral hogs have been in Texas for a long time, but over the last 20 years, their numbers have grown exponentially. Farmers and ranchers simply are overwhelmed and cannot keep up with them. Texas, specifically South Texas, has been hit by this hog epidemic more than anyone else in the United States. We've seen a decrease in many species, not just whitetail, but turkey, quail, armadillo, snakes, rabbits. These hogs are known to eat anything in sight and have no natural enemies. They reproduce exponentially, and so it becomes a huge challenge for us to harvest enough to put a dent in the population. Hunting pigs is a huge challenge, mainly because they're nocturnal, and you don't see them very often during the day. Most hunters haven't even considered hunting hogs at night, so introducing them to this new concept of hunting them under lights Stalking in, getting really close, is a totally new hunting style. And if you're good enough to do it with a bow, man, it can be really fun. Bow hunting means different things to different people. There's a mind, body, and spirit component to it. Trial and error and, and failure and success. We've been doing this for 10,000 years. He calls it snorkeling when they put their face in the water and you could, see, you could hear the bubbles coming up from them eating the corn in the water. That's just a bone chilling experience because you're right there on top of these big old pigs that you have no clue what they're capable of. My name is Felipe Guajardo, but my friends call me Flip. At a young age, my dad really kind of influenced me to be outside, work outside, learn the love of the land for our own personal farm, and that kind of set the pace on me just enjoying the outdoors. We spent our time chasing deer, turkey, javelina, so even back then, I knew that the outdoors were, was going to be a part of my life forever. So I went to a little school called Colorado Outdoor Adventure Guide School. And that really set the pace for my future on learning about the business aspect of hunting and guiding. As soon as I got out of school, I was excited to get my career started. So the ranch we're hunting this week is a ranch like no other. It has three different types of terrains. We start off in our heavy oaks and we go down into our coastal plains, which turns into mud flats that opens up to the bay. 
So one of our prized animals is, a, is actually an endangered species, is the ocelot. And for that reason, we protect all of our cats and we do zero night hunting. Not being able to hunt predators at night set the stage for these, the pig population to just explode. So I've been working with a biologist and we received a special permit to shoot these pigs at night, but only with a bow. So I've actually worked with some companies in the past that specialize in hunting pigs at night. So this is the perfect opportunity to bring them in and put a plan together. So if this plan works and we can show that it helps our conservation efforts, we're hoping to be able to do this year round. So if you've never hunted pigs at night in the water, you are missing out. So they actually dunk their head in the water while they're eating corn and they're just blowing bubbles. They're in there splashing around, having a good time, squealing with no care in the world. So with them making all that noise, it's really easy for us to stalk in downwind behind the light. So the pigs bed down right on the other side of this pond in that thick brush with the wind being from the south end, it'll be right in our face. They'll be in here, they'll put the bait in the water. They'll be in the water making bubbles, a lot of noise, splashing around, enjoying themselves. We can sneak in from this backside, put the light right here, be perfect stock. Bait there, light, camera, be good. Perfect. I'm Murray Choate, I'm the developer of Slow Glow Honey Products. I've enjoyed hunting all my life. Started as a young kid, running around in the woods with my brother, my dad taking me to the ranch. I got my first bow when I was 10 years old and started hunting very soon after that. Started off with deer, progressed into elk, pronghorn, turkey, but finally settled in on hogs. Found that that was my passion. I love hunting hogs with the bow and arrow. I have a biomedical engineering background so I've always tinkered around with electronics. What started off very primitive in the 90s has now blossomed into what we call slow glow technology. Our lights are designed to increase in intensity real slow over a two minute period so the hogs will never know what lit them. We met Flip six or seven years ago and are really excited to be at his ranch now to help with the hog problem that he's got. So the first time I met the Slogo team, we invited them out to our family ranch and we ended up getting the coolest footage that we've ever seen. We knew that there was a monster boar in the area and we were out to get this one pig. And as time went on, we had this incredible lightning show. At one point in time, we had a lightning bolt get so close. When we went back to camp to review the footage, it was just incredible. We were standing out in the middle of the field with no camo on, probably 10 feet from these pigs, and they could not see us. We ended up getting this shot on that big boar later, and ever since then, I have been a firm believer in the Slow Glow products. So we all know that this ranch has a lot of pigs, but holding them in one spot, long enough for us to stock in and, and take a shot, is a bit tricky. So I brought in my buddy from Raging Boar Outdoor Innovations, to help us set up a bait plan. All right, Flip, first thing we're gonna do here today is we're gonna dig a hole about right here so we can put our Moab. Our Moab is a special bait bag that is filled uh, with proteins and grains, and we're gonna dump it just in the hole just like that. Now I'm gonna go back over the top of that. This is our root and juice. It's a very thick mineral uh, protein-based pour-out attractant. It seeps down into the ground. Um, well, this is going to create a pretty much permanent hollow here. That doesn't hurt to apply it to any vegetation or any logs or stuff that are around. Hi, my name is Dave Lindler. I am the founder of Raging Boars Outdoor Innovations, and I am from Greenwood, South Carolina. As a hunter over the years, I've spent large amounts of money, just like most guys have, pouring out products that just didn't work, and I said there's got to be something that's better. So I started experimenting a little bit. So I went to Walmart and bought some just regular cooking items, came up with a concoction, and I put mine out with four different other established companies. And my Walmart concoction beat four of those 
It took a night and a half to eat mine and 21 days for them to get interested in the other. So I said, if I can do that with cheap products, I can do that with premium products. So then we started experimenting. And that was my whole goal was to build a better product. Now we're gonna spread out our boar butter, which is a very thick uh, flavor paste. This is our Swan Apple Supreme. You can see this very thick and sticky. Uh, works very well on uh, just natural logs and vegetation. Now we're gonna uh, spread out our boar biscuits. Our boar biscuits, as you can see, is a very thick trail mix type mixture. It's, it's loaded with peanuts, almonds, cashews, and corn, and multiple grains that's also in flavor. And all we're gonna do now is just kind of throw out handfuls of this, and this is just to add more scent into the area. Also give them something a little bit different. This is basically the sprinkles on the ice cream. This should provide uh, a very good attractant for long range. I uh, should draw the hogs in here and keep them here for an extended period of time. The goal is, is to keep them here long enough to be able to come in and get the shot. So this is a really big ranch with lots of room to drive around. So I want to set up eight different spots that we can monitor remotely. So we weren't going to sit on any of these bait stands. We we're going to monitor them remotely and wait for an opportunity for a spot and stock to get in within bow range. So we had to consider where we were going to be driving in from, where we'd park the truck, and how we would get up to the slow glow light. All within complete darkness without getting busted. So each of these stocks were built around a dominant wind and staying behind the light. These slow glow lights completely blind the pigs. As long as you stay quiet and downwind, you can easily stock within 20 yards. Luckily, this ranch has a lot of sandy terrain so it made it easy for us to clear out some spots and, and rake the sand to make a stock with four or five people quietly up to the slow glow light. So we knew the pigs were already coming into the water. So once we put down some raging boar attractant and some corn, we knew we could draw them easily into our spot. In order to monitor all these bait spots, we really needed a good cellular camera to alert us when all these pigs were there. So in my experience, there's really no other company out there better than Wise Eye Cameras. Buddy, what you doing here? I'm setting up this Wise Eye camera. This is um, this is one of those new high-tech cameras you've been reading about. This has got species recognition in it. This camera is uh, it's connected by Hunt Control. I don't know if you've heard of that, but Hunt Control is a species recognition, sorting, patterning, predictive analysis type program. And the more pictures we get, the more amazing this thing works. These, these cameras and the other eight cameras that are out on these bait sites are gonna be steady feeding us a supply of data, supply of pictures. We're gonna know what's out here. And we'll know what time they're coming in, what wind direction they like, what moon phase, what temperature, what wind speed, all of that stuff is tracked just from this camera taking pictures. So their recognition software automatically knows what kind of animals are in the picture. So these cameras are not only showing us where the pigs are at, but they're also giving us accurate weather conditions. So that kind of information gives us a huge advantage on this hunt. And these cameras will be able to notify us within seconds of these hogs showing up on our hunt. So if you combine all of that with the slow glow lights, you're in for a fun night of hunting. Power management in the field has always been a challenge. It's really hard to get a reliable 12 volt power source in the woods. Our Solar Pro power management system was designed to not only provide 12 volt reliable power for the slow glow system, but also optional devices like the Wise Eye cameras. Over the next couple of days, we set up eight different spots in total with lights, cameras, and attractants. Home court is our spot closest to the cabin. Most of the stock is down a main caliche road, then a short final stock through an open field using a mesquite tree for cover. By the time we get to the light, we will be above the pigs looking down at about a 10 yard shot. The Beretta Pond is one of my personal favorites. We actually dug out a little trench to flood a low lying area so they can come in and root. We put a small ground feeder at the spot so we can throw corn throughout the night. We'll be parking the truck about 200 yards away and walking down a fence line. The last 80 yards of the stock is through some, some, some mesquites behind a cover of light. By the time we get into shooting position, 
we're looking at a shot no more than 20 yards. The Santa Cruz Pond probably has the highest pig traffic on the ranch. The very first night we set up the Wise Eye, it showed an absurd number of pigs crawling all over each other to get to the bait. We set up our light and camera in a flooded area just south of the big pond and poured out some raging boar attractant. We'll park our truck on the main road, then come in downwind, crawling under a fence, through a marked trail and popping out just 12 yards from our bait. This spot will likely get hit every hour of the night. So one spot that we baited away from all the ponds is an area that we've always called the deer. We utilize the hog log to try and give the pigs something to roll around all night. This stalk is really easy and we should be able to sneak within 10 yards. We won't have the sound of water to cover up our stock, but the sound of the hog log rolling around on the ground accomplishes the same thing. Another spot just down the road we call the turkey. No water here either, so we put a small ground feeder that we can activate with a remote. This stock is straight up a main road, which is really sandy, so it should make the stock super quiet. The salt flat had a big group of pigs that devoured our bait within 27 minutes after we had set it up just on the first day. We set up another hog log and buried some Moab attractant. We will park the truck up the hill and have a pretty easy downhill stalk behind the cover of our light. These pigs will be turning circles, giving us 360 degrees of shot opportunities. Los Conchas was a last minute spot. We knew that we had pigs coming in the water, so we mounted a light just behind a berm, and we will be sneaking in behind a mostly open field behind a slow glow. Once we make it to the light, we should be less than 10 yards away to make a good shot. Last, but certainly not least, is the San Francisco Pond. We know that there's a monster boar there with some big tusk in the area. We will have to drive in from the north to avoid our headlights pointing in that direction. We'll sneak in along an established trail and pop out about 10 yards away from the pond. So the hunters come in tomorrow and we have more pigs than we know what to do with. So we're going to take out as many pigs as we can at night, but there's plenty of things to hunt during the day as well. We need to harvest a few coyotes, and I'd love to do a spot and stock for a trophy Neil guy. And it's turkey season, so we're going to have plenty of action during the day. <laughs>